Good evening, Kenya. Thank you for choosing to watch your favorite channel. This is a roundtable media conversation with the President of the Republic of Kenya, President William Samoy Ruto, with different media organizations. Those included here are KTN News, we have TV47, Nation Media Group, we have K24, we have KBC and Citizen TV. My name is Sam Gituku from Citizen TV, and I want to give my colleagues an opportunity to introduce themselves. Thank you very much, Sam. Mimi naitua Ali Manzu, natuka KTN News, na tuko hapa kwenye mjadala wazi na mwishimi wa Rais Jioni Aleo. Good evening. My name is Grace Korea Kanja from TV47, which is under Cape Media Limited. Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Wafula, an editor with the Business Daily. I represent the Nation Media Group, and thank you for having us this evening. I'm Diamboni. Mimi ni Daniel Kitu, kutoka K24, Media Max Network Limited. Nami ni Kamchemenza kutoka shirika la utangazaji humu nchini KBC. Karibu mtazamaji na shukran vile vile rais kwa kutualika. Right, and Mr. President, the last time we met on the 4th of January, you said you'd have wanted to introduce yourself. So please go ahead. William Ruta is my name, and I work for the people of Kenya. <laughs> Great. And Your Excellency, we're here to have a conversation about um, a review of your presidency, which started some 15 months ago, but also to be also specific to what has transpired in the year 2023. Of course, you've had a lot of activities. You've attended different events. You've spoken a lot about your focus, your vision for the country. And tonight, we want to spend some time to answer the questions of accountability, what you've been able to do, what you've not been able to do, and what the promises in the coming years. And of course, we'll start with a question about what has just happened to the Kenya shilling, which appears to be on a free fall. Vyema kabisa, asante sana, Sam. Mwishimi Rais, nadhani ni wazi kwamba kichochea uchumi huwa ni sarafu ya kima taifa na jinsi nafufanya kazi yake katika taifa lolote lile. Hapa nchini Kenya, kusema ukweli sarafu ya dola imekuwa ikipanda ni kama free fall kwa sasa yani hakuna udhibiti ama control yoyote inayoendelea kumbuka mheshimiwa rais hii pia inachochea katika biashara za uagizaji bidhaa hapa nchini biashara zinazoendelea hapa nchini e, wafanyi biashara wanaotumia dola na inachangia sana katika uchumi kuendelea kudidimia kwa sababu unakuta sarafu ya dola iko juu na inadhibiti ulitangaza awali kwamba katika siku zichache zijazo dola itaonekana ikishuka chini lakini imekuwa ikienda hamsini, miamoja, hamsini na moja, miamoja, hamsini na tatu. hivi mheshimiwa rais ni mikakati ipi ambayo uko nayo kwa sasa ambayo itakuwa ni ya karibu sana kuhakikisha kwamba unadhibiti hii hali ambayo inaathiri uchumi kwa sasa bila shaka uchumi umepanda zaidi gharama ya maisha iko juu bei ya bidhaa muhimu ziko juu sana kwa sababu kiwango cha dola kiko juu na hakiwezi kudhibitika Asante sana. Eh, Ali Manzu na ndugu wenzako ambao mmekuja kunitembelea. Eh, kwanza nataka niseme eh, nimefurahi sana kupata mtaba mmoja na nyinyi tuweze kujadili mambo ambayo ni ya muhimu kwa taifa letu la Kenya. And maybe just to answer you so that eh, eh, we are all in on the same page. Um, the issue of uh, exchange rate is a factor of many aspects. Um, as you know, uh, I came into office when there was a lot of fluid activity in the, in the space. We had a serious situation caused by COVID. We had a big war in Europe. We have a huge drought, climate change, caused by climate change, and all those factors combined to create a situation globally that uh, increased the price of commodities that we import, increased uh, demand for the dollar. And in fact, what has happened is that the Fed that is the, the Central Bank of the US, if you wish, has increased interest rates from 0 0.25 to 5.25. In fact, in the history of the Fed, this is the steepest 
interest rate increase in its history. What that has done, and uh, because every country tried, including Kenya, mm -hmm. every country tried to enhance liquidity mm -hmm. because of the crisis, the, the, the COVID, the, so everybody tried to increase money in supply. In the process, we created a very serious situation of inflation. And when inflation ran away, in fact, for some countries, inflation has gone all the way to 40%, especially in our continent. Our inflation, inflation was almost double digit. It was nine point something. So what the world has done, and which Kenya we are doing, is uh, to manage inflation, to manage money supply. Because if you don't manage inflation, you run into a lot of problems. So what has the US done? They increased their interest rates. Mm -hmm. And because of the increase of, uh, on interest rates, there was the demand for the dollar. People who were, had, had invested outside the US began to see an opportunity in the US. And so there was a lot of dollars leaving Kenya, leaving other countries, going to the US. What does that mean? It reduces the supply of dollars. And therefore, the, as compared to Kenya shillings, then the situation went up. Everybody expected that the US would ease on interest rates, on, on, uh, on, on, on increasing their own interest rates. They didn't. That was the expectation of the whole globe. That's number one. Number two, in Kenya, we were maintaining an artificial exchange rate. You had the central bank governor, Mr. Thuge, say that this interest rate of, uh, this uh, exchange rate of 130 that we were maintaining was artificial. I mean, it was maintained using our foreign exchange reserves. What happened? We split, uh, the government of Kenya spent $2.6 billion. That is almost 400 billion Kenya shillings. In, you know, supporting the Kenya shilling so that it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't go to its actual <coughs> exchange rate. How did they do that? You sell, uh, you sell dollars, Kenya, Kenya uh, say, uh, reserves. reserves. You sell it to the market so that you increase supply of dollars at a price that is not, uh, that, that is not the, the, the actual price, a subsidized price. So but is it, Mr. President, this is the central bank? Uh, central, the central bank, central bank of the Kenya. Market. Yes, the central bank of Where Kenya. Where are they getting it from, the dollar itself? Our reserves. You know we have reserves. Yes, the reserves the, the as reserves of that time were oh. just over four point something months. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is exactly what happened. That's why those reserves came down to three point something months. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Yep. President. Today, and, and let me just finish. So because of that, because of that artificial support, when I came in, that is unsustainable. And it is partly why we have a, we have a crisis in our economy, because we were doing things that have no market support. So what I decided is we cannot, because the, it was anyway going to end up in a bigger crisis. So we stopped the artificial supply of dollars into the market. That's number one. We also, and that is why the rates went up. It is better for the rates to be up and they are not supported by artificial. We are not losing any foreign currency as a country. And what has happened is that imports to Kenya have gone down because our exports are now much more attractive. In fact, the people in the tea sector, the people in the coffee sector are earning much more than they were earning before. So what has happened is we are now keeping the exchange rate at a market rate that we are not artificially supporting it. Yes, Mr. And, President, we will, we will and, get to... And what will happen is once the international uh, uh, space, economic space, eases out, the dollars then, the, the exchange rate will then come down 
uh, uh, con consistent with our own management. Thank you. Um, so in April last year, um, you did say that you will bring down or the shilling will come down to about 115. This is an interview on accountability. That shilling has moved from 120.37. We are looking at 153.78 by Friday. And this is the central bank official rate. We also know that this is not the actual rate that actually Kenyans are spending when they go to buy the dollar. You promised that the government to government deal will fix this problem. Has it failed? And if so, what really happened? Let me tell you, my brother, if I hadn't structured the G2G deal, the dollar today maybe would be at 250. That's how serious it would be. Why? Because the US Fed kept on increasing their interest rates. And you know very well that we can do the things we have done as Kenya, but we are also subject to the global economy. The G2G deal has worked. If we hadn't experienced an increase in the Fed, the dollar would be at 120 today. But because they kept on increasing the uh, US exchange rate, our exchange rate, if we hadn't done the G2G uh, transaction, if we were still going to the market to look for $500 million, 60 billion Kenyan shillings every month, and in fact, many banks, by the way, were waiting for the dollar to be at 200. Yeah, they will have to wait for a while because we have done things that nobody expected would be done and we have managed to make sure that although things are not going the way we had planned, but they haven't gone overboard. Mr. President, um, when did the US Fed begin raising the interest rates? Maybe, maybe two years ago, immediately after the serious uh, the COVID situation, that is when they began to... to Meaning increase. they were already doing this by the time of your election? They, but they were not at 5.2. No, no, I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah, they had in begun. Terms of what was happening. They had begun. I ask that because in April this year, that's yeah. when the government-to-government -government deal started. Correct. And I remember your deputy, Rigadi Gashagwa, saying that... Um, those people that have dollars in their houses, it is time to sell because yes. you're just about to suffer loss. Yes. Yourself, you said that you see it going below 120. Correct. 115 dollars even. Correct. So if you have all this information, why then promise something that was also bound to the changes in the global economy? You see. And now you're saying it could have gone up to 200. Which figure do we trust? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, my friend. We live in a, in a, in a global environment. And, and I know you're saying that because uh, when we structured the G2G, many people and, uh, keep saying, but this is what, what's happening in this country. This is what's happening in this country. Fuel today is at diesel 200 shillings, 201 in Kenya. It's exactly the same in our neighboring countries, Tanzania, Uganda. Many people think that fuel in Kenya is artificially managed by government of Kenya. Yes, it is president. not. We'll, we'll come to that. So, we'll so, come to no, the question that's, I'm your... just giving you as an example yeah. because so that you understand mm -hmm. where we are. And I want to say this without fear of any contradiction. If we had not tamed already we were having stockouts here of fuel because of the lack of dollars. Because all these oil companies were running around. When I came into office, the first people I met were the oil companies. And they told me, look, we, 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 we can't find the dollars. You know, although we are being told uh, dollars is at 120 something, 130, we can't find it. You know, the dollars are not there because the rates were artificial. So we came to discover later 
you know, that, oh, this dollar was being managed artificially. And that is how we realized that $2.6 billion of government money had been used, sold to banks to support an artificial uh, exchange rate that was actually going to go the opposite direction. Mr. If we hadn't been managing the uh, dollar exchange rate artificially, Today, we would be talking a different story. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. you've been in office for 15 months and right. you wouldn't want to go to what happened in the previous regimes, and that's why you're taking I us. am not talking about any, any previous regime. I'm just giving you the facts. That was artificially what you're talking about. Um, let us remain here, and we're looking at even the region, in terms of the East African region. Look at even the Uganda shilling and the Tanzanian currencies. They aren't depreciating as fast as they are, as Kenya is doing. In fact, uh, some of those currencies are actually appreciating as we speak today. They do not have a government-to-government -government deal, but they are somewhere. They, most of them import from Kenya. The question is, what has been the problem with the government-to-government -government deal, and why has it not been able to fix the slide in the Kenya shilling? You know, the government-to-government -government deal is not the only thing that will fix the exchange rate. It is one of the many things, right? We are a different economy from Uganda. We are a different economy from Tanzania, right? We have much more imports. We import much more for our industries because we are a different economy for all our other services than Uganda or Tanzania does. We are not in the same category economy-wise. We are a middle-income economy. They are in a different category, not like us. So you cannot compare them and us. Then you are not comparing the same, uh, same stuff. And I don't want us to talk about other countries because uh, then I don't want us to say which country is better than which one. Then Mr. Mr. President, let's nice. talk solutions. Yes. Mm. Um, because this basically drives almost everything, right, in the country. So the question would be what you are doing to strengthen the Kenya shilling. Precisely. Mm -hmm. that now you're talking. Three things. Number one, you have heard me clearly. In the last budget, I said we are going, there are things we are importing today which we should not be importing. We shouldn't be importing cement. We shouldn't be importing steel. We shouldn't be importing furniture. We shouldn't be, there are many things we are spending huge amounts of money to import when we can manufacture them locally. That is the reason why we have put a levy on the import of these unnecessary imports of products into Kenya so that we can stem the export of our foreign currency and manufacture those uh, items locally. Number two, we are importing 500 billion Kenya shillings every year of food items, 500 billion, from edible oil to maize to rice to all those, 500 billion US dollars we are importing. Uganda does not import that much food. Tanzania does not import that much food. We are the only country that imports that much food. Why? Because we haven't paid as much attention to agriculture. And number two, we need to understand that while Uganda, 80% is, is arable with rain, Kenya, only 15% is arable with rain. Tanz uh, Tanzania is a completely different story. Almost 60% of their land has rain and is arable. Ours only 15%. That's why we are importing $500 million uh, of food into Kenya. So what do we need to do? We need to pay attention to our agriculture. The reason why we have invested, and that is why in the manifesto that I sold to the people of Kenya, agriculture, modernization, mechanization is one of the big tickets that I decided that I'm going to do. We have changed the trajectory on our stable food. Today, we are producing more in terms of maize, which is our stable food. In fact, my plan is that by next year, we shouldn't be importing maize into Kenya. We, we should be producing enough. 
This year, we have increased our production of maize by 40%, more than we did uh, last year. Last year, we produced 44 million bags. We are producing 61 million bags this year. And it is because we have done interventions. Fertilizer that was being sold at 7,000, we are now selling at 2,500 because we are supporting production. We are full scale into the space of edible oil that we are importing. I am working with different governors. This year, we are working on uh, sunflower, we are working on soya, we are working on palm oil. The president of uh, Indonesia was here. We have agreed on a whole chain because they, they are, they are uh, the biggest country that we import edible oil from. They are going to work with us to grow palm oil in Kenya. That project is being led by uh, county governments. In fact, it is being led by uh, Gladys Wanga, the county governor of, uh, of Homa Bay, because it is in the coastal region and around Lake Victoria that we will have the biggest uh, uh, space and the biggest opportunity for us to produce palm oil. We are going to uh, do more around uh, sunflower. We are going to do more so that we also stem the tide of loss of dollars into other jurisdictions because of food imports. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I am doing. Number Please three, we are also, I am also looking at how are we going to get more foreign exchange into Kenya? That is why I am working around the clock to make sure that we have more Kenyans working in Kenya, in foreign companies when they are in Kenya, and we are also connecting Kenyans to opportunities outside Kenya. For your information, just so that I conclude, um, I made a commitment in our plan that we want to increase foreign remittances coming into Kenya, hard currency that comes into Kenya from uh, foreign remittance from $4 billion to $10 billion. It is the reason why we just concluded a diaspora investment conference here in uh, KICC this week. It is the reason why I have signed a bilateral agreement, uh, labor agreement with Saudi, with, uh, with uh, UAE, with Germany, with uh, uh, Canada, and many other countries we are exploring possibilities. And for your information, as a result of those what I have been doing, between now and next month, January, the first 10,000 Kenyans will be leaving to go and work in foreign countries so that they can support themselves and support Kenya because many countries have established a strategy on how to grow our uh, to grow their foreign exchange earnings. Now, on, on, on the other hand, uh, maybe still on the government-to-government -government, uh, deals, uh, is it giving us as a nation the desired uh, results? Absolutely. Eight months down the line. Absolutely. In fact, that same government-to-government uh, um, -government, government product or program, many countries are seeking to know how they can copy that, uh, that program, because it is giving us what we couldn't have gotten in a different way. Then how can we control the prices now? You see, fuel, it's been up and down. Like right now we're talking of 210, 212 per liter. Ma Ali yes. <laughs> you heard me say this. The, the, the price of fuel is not determined by the government of Kenya. It is not determined by any company. It is determined by the producers. That is why today the price of fuel in Kenya is the same price in Uganda, is the same price in Tanzania, because we buy from the same place. Uh, you know, I've heard people say uh -huh. the president should reduce the price to 150. <laughs> How are you going to do that? Unless I take taxpayers' money and go and subsidize you know, subsidize, <coughs> which is removing money from this pocket and putting it in this other pocket. Moshimua Rais. Moshimua Rais, you know, you know, bay ya mafuta, serikali haina uwezo mkubwa kusana bay ya mafuta. Itakumbuka kwamba wakati wa kampene kabla ujawa Rais, 
ulisema kwamba bei ya mafuta wakati huo wakati wa utawala wa Rais Mstafuru Kenyatta ilisababishwa na wale ambao waliwaita cartels na zaidi ukaeleza kuhusiana ushuru mwingi. Nini kilibadilika? Hakuna kitu imebadilika. Mambo ya ushuru nimepunguza ushuru kwa mafuta. Nimepunguza ushuru ya road development levy. Nimepunguza ushuru ya railway development levy na ilikuwa kwa budget tumepunguza eh, ushuru mara nne in di four different categories mm -hmm. but you see that is not sufficient to reduce the price because the price of oil itself is going up because of the producers ni sawa kusema kwamba ni sawa kusema kwamba changamoto za kimataifa zinaadhiri bei ya mataifa nchini you see changamoto za kimataifa na bei ya, ya fuel ya kimataifa imechangia mm -hmm amesema huyu mrembo kwamba ni tumeongeza bei ya ya VAT ni kweli tumeongeza bei ya VAT lakini tumepunguza ushuru zingine tunaongeza bei ya VAT kwa sababu gani Kenya tuko katika kiwango inaitwa eh, middle income economy we are in the same category as South Africa we are in the same category as eh, Morocco we are in the same category as Tunisia i want you to check their taxes you know because our taxes are now at 15.6% of gdp 15.6% of gdp taxes in south africa is 27% of gdp taxes in uh, morocco is 32% of gdp what am i trying to say i am trying to answer the question because you know the people of kenya are being pushed and being told look you are paying more taxes than other countries is that true? That is not true. Yes, now, Mr. Mr. We are paying the Let's same taxes to to like, uh, like all countries yeah. that are in our same category. And let me tell you the difference so that, I, so that you can take the chance. Let me tell you the category. If we go to the market, the countries that are in LDCs, they get a lower interest rate than those of us who are in... Uh, in, in, in income. middle income. income. So we, you cannot compare them and us. We are in a different category. And for your information, countries like France, their tax as a percentage of GDP is 45%. We are only at 15.6%. That's the difference. Now, Mwishimua Rais, bado tuko kwa hili swala la shilingi na dola. Hmm umezungumzia miradi tofauti tofauti hapa ambayo mmeweka katika mpango wa kuweza kupunguza hiyo dola ambayo shilingi iweze kuwa na thamani. Uh, swala la mahindi umesema by mwaka ujao Aprili hapo pengine uh, swala la mahindi tutapunguza kuimport na mambo kama hayo. Ukatajwa maswala kuhusu pia edible oil uh, na miradi ambayo ipo. Lakini mkenya pale nje anajiuliza watasubiri hadi lini hii shilingi iweze kupata thamani yake uh, ili maisha yaweze kuwa sawa? wa Kenya wa Kenya watazubiri kwa sababu dola sio uh, serikali ya Kenya inaamua dola ni biashara ni kati ya zile vitu tunauza na vile tunanunua ndio tunapata ile uh, uwezo wa kudhibiti kwa sasa kuna vitu nyingi tunaagiza kutoka nje na ndio nimesema ili kupunguza vitu ambazo tunaagiza kutoka nje lazima tuanze kuzitengeneza hapa Kenya. Simiti nimesema ya kwamba na tumeweka katika budget ya mwaka huu ya kwamba simiti itakuwa inatengenezwa Kenya kwa sababu tuko na kampuni tutapanua kampuni ambazo tuko nazo ndio tuweze kuokoa dola ambazo tunatumia kuagiza simiti. Chuma tutaanza kutengeneza Kenya tayari tuko na kampuni ya kutosha kutengeneza Kenya. Furniture tutatengeneza Kenya. Kwa hivyo, Chakula tutazalisha Kenya. Ndio tuweze kupunguza ile dola ambazo tu, ama e, pesa ambazo tunatumia ya kigeni kuagiza vitu ambazo zinakuja Kenya ndio tuweze kuwa e, ku manage ile exchange rate Kwa hivyo, kati ya Kwa hivyo wa rais hadi hapo Mkenya ataendelea kukandamizika. Hadi hapo unajua sasa hakuna miujiza itafanyika <laughs> unajua sasa wewe unataka kufanya miracles <laughs> hakuna miracles you know no. this is what is happening globally Mr. President. We, are, we live in a global economy and we right. need to understand mm. and, and it is very important for us sitting here 
to tell the people of Kenya that, because you know, many people are saying the price of fuel. I want to tell the people of Kenya, the price of fuel is not controlled by the government of Kenya. That's why I was saying yesterday, many people are praising me that, oh, you see, we have now begin to see the prices of fuel coming down. I told them, no, Musinisifu, I have not, hakuna kitu nimefanya, ni wale wanatuuzia wameanza kupunguza bei. Na mi nataka ni waeleze wa Kenya. Bei ya mafuta hapa Kenya. Ni sawasawa na bei ya mafuta. Mr. Mr. President, we'll get to fuel. We'll get to fuel. 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 Uh, we shall get to that, Mr. Uh, President. But I want to ask something my colleagues um, asked earlier. So did you promise what you couldn't deliver? I promised in the context of where we are. If things had stayed constant, we would be, I would have kept my promise. But you know, we live in a situation that things are changing. What, 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 the what, world, we what live constant? in a global, in a global in a global environment, that the prices are going up, you cannot keep unless, and I don't want to lie to the people of Kenya and say, let me spend public money so that I look like I am keeping my promise mm -hmm. and I am doing the wrong thing. I, it is better for me to be brutally honest and say, this is not possible. If what, we, we, if may what have made, we may have made a commitment, yeah. but because the situation changed and everybody knows what that situation is today, the prices of commodities went up. You had Uhuru Kenyatta say he was not the one who started the war in Ukraine, you know, and all the other things. But that is, that is okay. You know, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President if, if were to, what, what, if we were must, what we must be honest to ourselves is, yes. are we managing, are we doing the best to manage the situation so that doesn't flip and go in the wrong direction? And I want to tell you, yes. Mr. President, um, I thank you for that response. And to be brutally honest, just to pick up from uh, where you are sitting, um, I think Kenyans know that it's actually true that government has a big role to play in terms of the fuel prices. It's not true that government doesn't play because 40% of the taxes, between 45 to 40 to 45% of the fuel price in Kenya is actually government taxes. So government has a big role to play on that. Um, I think we need to move to energy now that uh, we no, are no, as energy. Just for that, Paul, um, Mr. President, I hear you, and I've listened to you carefully saying that if things had remained constant, and I was hoping that you'd explain what is that constant, because you also say if 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 the if the U.S. dollar had not been the exchange rate was not, if if the U.S. interest rate was not increased, it was increasing it, already. It was increasing, but you know, it has reached a place where everybody thought. It was going to stop. But the next three, four increases were completely unexpected. Even today, many, all of us expected that they would begin to come down. But they've decided to keep it. Okay. And Mr. And, President. And, uh, and you see, yeah. while uh, my good brother here said government has, uh, has uh, no, no, a, no, a, a lot of say on taxes. Yeah. That's true. You see, my friend, while it is true, that I can tomorrow say, let us reduce the, uh, the taxes. It is also true that tomorrow, for every seven, for every, every 10 shillings I collect, every 10 shillings, seven shillings go to paying debt. Are you telling me that you want me to do what other countries have done, to default on debt? Because that's the only option I have. I, I can say, okay, let us pay less, and then let's tell the international community, Kenya cannot service debt. Is that what you want us to do? That would be very... And Mr. Reckless. President, that's what I was asking you. So because, precisely, yeah. you, you cannot say, it is simplistic for you to say, yes, the government can, 40% uh, of fuel is taxes. The government can decide tomorrow to lower the taxes. That, that's, but that, you know, those taxes we are collecting, we have education to fund. First, we have seven shillings, for every 10 to pay debt, which William Ruto did not accumulate, right? Number two, the three other shillings, we have to pay our children to go to school. We have to manage our security. We have to manage our health. We have to manage everything else. We have to pay our teachers. So are you telling me, I go and tell teachers, I don't have salary for you this month because I have to reduce the price of uh, of uh, of fuel 
Do you think that would be reasonable? Ma Could maybe just, issue? maybe just, uh, Mr. No, President, just on, that, on, on that issue, just, just hold, hold on to that thought a bit. Because yes. if you look at the prices of fuel, what has happened, is that we are looking at consumption. If I look at the last data, the last three months data, consumption of fuel has actually dropped to an, a five-year low. And if you look at even KRA, the collection, they missed the target, they were off the ordinary revenue by about 31 billion Kenya shillings. So what is happening is, yes, on, our, on this end, you have a plan to collect taxes, but these taxes are not coming through to, to Kenya Revenue Authority. And on the other end, you are killing the economy because you have people not moving, consumption because oil and electricity basically will tell you for your, what is happening for, in the economy. For your information, your figures are wrong. Okay. Because if you look at the taxes that have been collected from fuel, they've gone up. That's, that's the correct position. So the, the other taxes are the ones that they have not met the targets. And why haven't they met the targets? Because I gave them a very high target. Mr. President. Because I wanted them to do much more than they are doing. Mr. President, let's just take a look at the data. So don't, don't, uh, don't misrepresent represent facts. Let's that, talk that's about the, correct position. the data you have from the Kenya Revenue Authority, yeah. because they're the ones who collect the revenue in their yes. report. In the first quarter, ended September 2023, the oil taxes, the target was 84.6 billion shillings. They collected 77.7 .7 billion shillings. Similar period last year, it was 78.5 billion shillings. That's a drop of about 800 million shillings. So indeed, for quarter one, there has been a reduction. If you are to speak about the volumes, the same quarter, diesel, in 2022, quarter one, it was 1.15 metric tons, 1.5 million metric tons. This time round, the same quarter, it is 1.05 metric tons, a reduction of 56,000 metric tons. For petrol, 770,000 for quarter one, 2022. Quarter one, this year, it is 742,000, a reduction of 28,000 metric tons. So there has been a reduction. The difference comes in because the taxes are higher, more expensive than it was last that year. That is not the correct position, my friend. Those let are me, figures from KRA. Let me explain to you. Okay. We import fuel for Kenya, but 40% of that fuel goes to Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda, and sometimes all the way to DRC. With the Eastern DRC get fuel from, from, from Kenya, right? So, so when you look at the figures, you must know that there is a component of fuel that is not sold in Kenya, that is sold outside Kenya. That, that you must, that you must know. It's about the revenue, isn't it? That, that's Success. what you must know first, yeah. right? So when you are looking at the quantities and the numbers, you need to factor that into, into, into the equation, right? And... Secondly, we are beginning to look at other alternatives. A lot, more, a lot more people now we've connected to electricity, people who are using diesel. In fact, this year, most of our thermal energy uh, electricity generation has gone down. Why? Because we have moved the number of Kenyans on electricity from 2.3 in uh, 2013 to now 9.4. So we have more Kenyans who, have, who are not using diesel. We have more, Ken we have more uh, companies, we have more infrastructure that who are using diesel that now we are connected to electricity. That explains some of the reduction. If you look at... Uh, but, but this is a direct consequence the from energy, the Finance Act of energy, 2023. That is not the, that's, not the correct, that's not the correct position. I am telling you... KRA is reporting more and more, President. Exactly. So that, what I, why I'm telling you, the quantities that have gone down is because more people are not using diesel, especially in the big companies, if you look at what, what we are saying. Because we have made it possible for them to use electricity. We have reduced in certain cases electricity for industrial power, so that instead of them powering their mechanism using diesel, they are now using electricity that we are generating. And it is partly why we have connected more people to electricity. Ye mwishimi wa rais, tukizungumzia, tukisalia tu kwa swala la bei ya mafuta. Na hii project ama tuneza sema hii G2G deal, ama mpango wa G2G deal. Correct. Um, azma yake ilikuwa ni kupunguza hata bei ya mafuta. 
yeah, did we achieve the required re results? Wewe ndio umesema hasma yake ni kupunguza bei. Hasma yake ilikuwa ni kuhakikisha kwamba number one, we have fuel. Because when I came into office, people were queuing in petrol stations for fuel. True? That was the case. Now, nobody is queuing in any petrol station. We have continuous supply. Number two, half the companies in Kenya, fuel companies, had closed down. Today, no company is operating outside the net. Every company has fuel. Number three, local companies were buying fuel in US dollars. Today, they are buying it in Kenya shillings. If you ask any Kenyan company that is selling fuel, our oil marketers across Kenya, they are very happy with the deal we structured. And number three, we have removed pressure on the US dollars. In fact, when I came into office, there are many companies who were considering relocating from Kenya. Why? Because if you can't have foreign currency to pay your dividends for companies that are not Kenyan, there, there was a backlog of almost eight months of companies that had not paid dividends for their investors because there was no dollars in the market. Today, I have made sure that though the dollar is high, but it is available. Mwishimu Arais, kajika siku kuya jamuhuru lisema kwa mba uchumi wa taifu umemarika. Kabisa. Siku chache kabla ya hotuba yako. Naibu Arais regari kashangu alikuwa mesema huende kachukua mda hata watakriban. Miaka kumi hivi katukushugulikia maswala muhime wanainchi. Wakati fulani, waziri wa fedha, Henry Rotich, akasema kwa mba. Kapana. Njuguna. Waziri wa fedha, Njuguna Ndungu, akasema kwa mba. Hali ni ngumu kwa taifa, haswa kulipa mishahara na maswala mengine ambayo siyana na fedha. Hali ya uchumi kwa vipi mwishimu wa raisi? Na tukisalia hapo, tukisalia hapo, Prime Sears, Musale Mudawadi, amesema three years, you know, to quote him verbatim, he's forecasting a difficult two to three years asking Kenyans to bear the burden. So just like Kitu here is asking, do we... During your manifesto launch, Mr. President, you called it the plan. Is there a plan there is for economic plan? recovery? Because you are saying this, your deputy is saying another thing. Um, Treasury CS, a different thing. Mm -hmm. Prime Cabinet Secretary. I mean, this should be one government that Nani is in one voice. Apa, uh -huh. Nani and Nani and, Nani and Kenyans kweli. themselves, Mr. Wanaskiza. President, wanaumia. Wa Kenya wanasikiza pia huyu wanasema hivi, huyu wanasema hivi. Tuliza boli. <laughs> Tumeli tuliza. Nani nasema hivi. Kweli. Esikizeni. Nimesema hivi, nataka kuwajibu nyinyi wote watatu. <laughs> Mimi nimesema, if you read my statement, I said our economy today is out of debt distress. And that is the truth. For your information, if I didn't step in, let me even say, if I wasn't president, the kind of decisions I have made, very difficult decisions, you know? very painful decisions. Decisions that I know they will cause pain, but it is better we make those decisions now than get Kenya into that distress. There are almost eight countries in our continent, including one that went into debt distress. I don't want to mention countries, you know them, last almost three weeks or, or one month. That is the worst thing that can happen to any country to go into debt distress. We, have, we are now out of debt distress. Our economy is stable, but the difficult part is still there. We still have to navigate. All we have done is to avoid the cliff, right? That we have avoided because we have negotiated, uh, we have put bricks on expenditure. Mm -hmm. We have uh, negotiated a, a good package with World Bank, with IMF, with development partners, with bilateral uh, countries, China, Europe, and everywhere. And that's why I have been on the road uh, so many times. People ask, what is he doing? It was necessary for me to step in and stabilize so that Kenya does not go into debt distress. Mm. Let, me, let, me, let me tell you what Ndungu was saying. He, Ndungu was in parliament. That's actually where that's I was right. headed. He says the Ndungu government was, Ndungu is was broke. In, Ndungu was in parliament. Mm. And he was being pushed or you need, you need to do this more. Dung was telling them, look, we don't have the kind of money you're talking about. 
We don't have money to increase this and to increase this and to increase this. That, that, that is the correct position. Mm. We have, and that is why we are cutting back on many aspects, because this is what is required at mm. this point in time. It is the difficult decisions we have to make now so that tomorrow looks better. Mm. And, 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 you see, and you see, and you see, what Musalia is saying mm. is for us to be able to get to a place where we can say we are good, you know, that things are moving, there is money in the pocket, we can feed ourselves, we can do everything, it takes time, mm -hmm. right? How long? And it takes time. Because <laughs> How long, you, Mr. You want, President? You want me to say three months, five months, one year. No, you're quoting relax. your prime oh, secretary relax. who says relax. two to three years. Relax. Yeah. Because About we are not in charge of all the factors that will finally determine where we are going, let us give ourselves time. No. But I want to promise the people of Kenya that we will sort this situation out. Mwishimuarez, unaposema utumi umemarika. Ufafanuzi wako utumi kumemarika ni nini? Hasa wakati ambapo wa Kenya wanalamikia garama ya maisha. Number one. Nani vizuri umayuliza garama ya maisha? Garama ya maisha inachangiwa na vitu itatu. Ya kwanza ni garama ya chakula. Right? Na nikisema uchumi, uchumi iko na uchumi ya tumbo. Nataka ni kuulize. Na wa Kenya wenzangu. Tumefanya lolote kupunguza garama ya chakula? Yes. We have done major steps. The price of food items is today lower than it was a year ago. It is a fact. Lakini... Of course, it's not convenient for certain people to accept. That's number one. Number two, globally, where is Kenya? Uchumi wa numbers, and these are not my figures. <laughs> We've brought down inflation from nine point something to now 6.8. Those are figures, global figures of the World Bank. Number two, our economy is growing at 5.4%, not my figures. World Bank figures, right? In fact, they, they put Kenya is the 29th fastest growing economy globally. Those are figures out there. Of course, many people don't want to accept. I know that there is still no money in people's pockets. Uchumi wa mfuko, bado. Ndiyo bado. Yeah? Are we, doing, are we doing something about it? Yes. That is why we are spending more money in education, yeah, we're putting money, more money in education. In fact, this year, we are putting an extra 120 billion in education. To do what? To make sure that we reduce outlay by uh, uh, Kenyans to fund education. Number two, we are putting more money in health. That is why we pass four laws. What do we want to do? We want to make sure every ordinary citizen has a health insurance. Those who are paying 500 will come down to 300. We are going to make sure that we don't leave nobody behind. That is why I am going out of my way to create jobs. Today, as I talk to you, because you need to put money in people's pockets. Today, as I talk to you, 120,000 people are, housing, uh, are working in our housing program. Today, as I talk to you, we are working on export of labor, making sure that we connect Kenyans to jobs abroad. Today, as I talk to you, we are expanding the space of digital jobs. We just passed the law so that we can create ICT hubs across Kenya. I have already negotiated for digital jobs globally. Kenyans are very good at it. We are going to spread opportunities so that people can put money in their pockets. So, so that's why I'm saying we, we need a plan. You know, it is easy to say... Uh, let us do quick fixes. We have been doing quick fixes for a long time and we haven't gotten it right. Many people wanted me I to do a Mr. quick President, fix the by, by subsidizing UNGA. I told them, Wish let us not subsidize UNGA. 
let us let us promote uh, production, mm -hmm. we will eventually get the right results better. Mwishimu wa Raisa, awali kulikuwa na mazingira uh, mazuri pengine ya kufanyia biashara. Tunavoona sasa, sijui kama palikoseka wapi pengine waneza kutueleza, manake kulikuwa na mazingira mazuri ya kufanyia biashara. Uh, kuna takuma mbazo zimetolewa wata na FKI na dhani wakisema kwa baku na makampuni ama kuna wa Kenya takriban elfu sabini ambo, ambo wameachishwa kazi. Kwa katika serikali yako mshimiwa, palikoseka nini haswa pale mpaka mazingira kufanya kazi ya kawa magumu kiasi cha kwamba asilimia 38 na ane ya wa Kenya wanasema kwamba maisha ni magumu. Na hizi litakui mambazo ziko zaidi ya hamsini kwa mara ya kwanza katika mkenya kusema kwamba maisha ni magumu na pesa hayonekani. Na tukisalia hapo Mr. President, because it's just based on what she said. Are you aware that 87% of Kenyans, your people, Mr. President, that is nine out of 10, have opted to reduce on personal expenditure because of the current economy. What wanna opt kutokula, which is what we're talking about, uchumi ya tumbo, they're foregoing food because of the current um, situation. Good, I want you to read a clip or even a text. It was in the standard. Ten months after Kibaki became president, the same number of Kenyans said Nak and President Kibaki had made their life worse than ever because Kibaki decided to make the right decisions, not popular decisions, right? Ten months after he was president. We are in the same space. But let me tell you the following. That... Um, it is true. We are facing a difficult situation. We are facing a difficult situation because that is the global situation. But are we doing something about it? Yes, we are doing something about it. Is it bearing results? Yes, it's bearing results. The price of food is coming down because of our intervention, by God's grace. The global economy is appreciating what Kenya is doing. Let me go to FKE. FKE said 70,000 Kenyans have, have, have lost jobs or have, have gotten out of jobs. Part of those 70,000 Kenyans, for your information, are teachers who are working in private schools who we have hired as government. Now they are teaching in, uh, we have hired 56,000 teachers into, into uh, as teachers. We have hired an additional 120,000 people working in our housing program. We have a plan to make sure that we keep increasing. We have only 31, 31 sites of uh, our housing uh, program. We have another 34 that will be rolled out uh, uh, the first quarter of next year. By the end of next year, we will have between 200 and 250,000 Kenyans working. So the economy is adjusting towards where we want to go. We do not want to be an export destination for others. We also want to produce what, what we should be producing. Quavo. And that is why we are, we, are, we are working on the difficult patch for now so that we can stabilize the future. Kwa hivyo mwishimu wa raisi unakubali kwa mba wa, wa Kenya alifu sabini kweli walifutu wa kazi ama walifutu wa kazi. Sikubali, wawo ndi wamesema. Mimi ni mekuambia. Na wakaandikuwa na serikali. Kumanisha ni makampuni ya liyo humu pegine ya lifunga wakatoka ndo wakaja wakaandikuwa na serikali ama hawa walikuwa ni wakutuka. Wacha sasa ni kuambie, wale wamesema, wale wa, yale wamesema. Mm -hmm. What I have told you is what I can vouch. Mm -hmm. Have I hired 56,000 teachers? Yes. Are there 120,000 people working in our housing program? Yes. Mm. So as to uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, on FKE side, we need to verify the figures. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President uh, Sam, just uh, one second. You have talked about pain and that Kenyans need to, you know, appreciate the pain and the process like uh, uh, President Kibaki did. Um, and State House and where you sit, you set the tone uh, for for whatever government agencies and officers below you do. That's correct. And you are asking Kenyans to be patient. You're asking Kenyans to tighten their belt. But if you look at 
your administration and state house to, to be specific and other officials. If you look at foreign travel has been up 26% just this um, ending quarter to 1.1 billion. And Kenyans are feeling quite taxed. And the hustlers that you represent are looking around the numbers that we are discussing today and they're wondering, um, where have we missed this? Because on one end, you're asking Kenyans to be, you know, to, 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 to bear with government, to tighten their belts. The Treasury is saying things are bad. You're saying you're preventing us from, you know, going off the cliff. But on the other end, the extravagance in government um, is really still, still heavy. How do you reconcile this to the situation? I will answer you this way. Go and look at the budget. We have cut by 50% the budget for travel and entertainment, 50%, right? In the supplementary budget, just go and check the figures. That is about 11 billion shillings that we have reduced. Have I traveled more than the, the former presidents? Yes. And I have traveled not as a tourist. I have traveled to sort out the matters of Kenya. If I didn't package the, what I have packaged to salvage our country from going over the cliff, we'd be talking a different story. Would you rather I sit in Nairobi and see Kenya go down, or would you rather I go to America, and America has really supported us in making sure that we structure uh, a, a deal with uh, uh, World Bank and IMF? Would I travel to China to make sure that we structure the bilateral deal that will see all our roads come back? Would, I, would you rather I don't travel or I travel to South Korea to sort out the problem you see in our, in our, in our, in our electricity space, that we now have money to do what the investment we have not done in the last 10 years, in our, in our energy transmission. The reason why you find uh, the blackouts, you know, and is the challenge we have with our, 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 our transmission infrastructure. And, and I have found resources to, to now sort, sort that out. So would you rather I sit here or I look for the bilateral agreements that will give Kenyans an opportunity to work abroad and to work at home on uh, digital jobs? This is what a president is supposed to do. And I can account for every shilling okay. that I have spent on my travel. And let me say this. On the budget of State House, um, there were so many things around the State House, including the famous NMS. Part of the money that was being allocated to State House was to pay contracts. NMS contracts and many other things, which I have said must stop. And because I want to lead the way in making sure that we manage what eventually is destroying our country called bending bills. And for your information, we have 506 billion of pending bills. You know, I need to lead the way. That's why I, I instructed staff in State House that State House must be the first one to clear pending bills. Most of the monies that have come here is to sort out NMS and all the other people that were here. And I have said those uh, infrastructure should be transferred to the parent ministries. Okay. State House must deal with State House matters. <coughs> Mr. President, we've spoken about um, three issues. We've spoken about the Kenya shilling and uh, how it's behaving against uh, the major currencies, uh, global currencies. We've spoken a bit of uh, energy and uh, what is happening in the field sector. We also touched on cost of living. We have so much to cover tonight, and I just seek your indulgence that we um, can be first in our responses. 